going on, ma'am? your window damaged? Anything damaged at all? No, she scared the hell out of me and I'm like, I'm calling the police. She's like, call the police. She's just screaming at me. Okay. I think she took a picture of my car. Okay. And she hurried up around her car, moved it somewhere else. Where's her car? I don't know. Well, I need to see her car if you have it. If you, yeah, what kind of car was she driving? She's standing over there looking Okay. Up. Yeah, it was a gray, a all light right. gray Toyota Camry. I don't see I right now, I don't, uh, I, I don't see like, a crime that has been committed. If there was damages, I would give you the opportunity to right. place her under citizen's right. arrest if you wanted to. I don't see any crime. I'm going to document her name, right. probably a story. I'm pretty sure she's going to give you a story where, you know, it was your fault and then right. this and that. But we'll just document that and see where her car is and we'll go from there, okay? I didn't is that get out fair of enough? Car fair right enough? Now. Okay, all right. Uh, do you think she was driving recklessly? In the parking lot, yes. I work here, so I'm here every day, and I think people can drive like her. Like, like fast or what? Yeah, she was driving fast, and she slammed in here. Like, I'm just scared. I don't want to get out of my car. Okay, what, what vehicle car. is she driving? Toyota Corolla. Like, I don't know where she is. Is that one over there? Okay, I'll go and talk to her if you can maybe uh, locate her car. That one right there? How you doing, ma'am? Yeah, I was just dropping my daughter off. I was in this lane where the cars, the police cars are. She was honking and honking. So I'm like, run my little dog, see what she want. She was like, um, you cannot park right, I mean, you cannot drive right here. This is a one lane thing. Um, she was like, this is a one lane thing. I'm going to hit your car. Just go, just go. I said, who are you talking to like that? So I parked, walked my daughter up in here, and was like, what's, you have a problem? Because you talking to me like I'm your child or something. You know, you can say something like, it's a one-night thing, but I've never known it to be a one-night thing because I always see two two lanes, two cars driving through. Right. Right. So then she just acting all scared and stuff because she just, I don't know, I don't know. Well, she said you threw some on a car. No, uh, ain't nobody no? throw nothing at her car. I had my daughter right there. My daughter was scared. Okay. My second grader was scared. Okay. All right. Exactly. She could call the police for, for whatever reason. I don't know. Well, uh, you know, some people just feel like sometimes they're, okay, well, uh, you know, so... Okay, well, I just by her because she's white. Was that? And she's white and she's making threats to me. I, don't I know. felt threatened by her. Okay. I just went in there and let them know because I know she works okay. here. Okay, what is your name now? I'm not giving you my name for Oh, what? yeah, I actually do have the right to ask you for your name okay, in this case, okay? Okay, let me make sure. Let okay. me make sure. Well, let, let you ma how long is it going to be for you to make sure? Okay. Let me make sure because I'm not about to get harassed by the police. Well, you know what, ma'am? I, I have every right to ask you for your name, okay? I'm not about to get harassed by the Ma'am, ma'am, no, no, no. Michelle, what? Yeah, what is your name? Ma'am, I'm going to give you. Ma'am, I'm going to give you two minutes. Hello? Okay. Miss? Miss? They, they talking about they have to get my name and all that. I don't know because okay, you're right. a Ma'am, just give me your name, please. Give me your name, I please. just told you my name is Michelle. No, no, it's not good okay, enough. Okay, well, I don't feel comfortable okay, right here. Uh, let's go, let's go 15. No, watch, no, watch don't. Yourself. Andre, they might have to touch me. Watch uh -uh. yourself, please. Don't touch Joe. me. Don't touch me. Ma'am, please. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. I'm pregnant. Do not touch me. Okay. Do not touch me. What the fuck is going on? Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Do not touch me, sir. Do not touch me. Just Do not touch fence. me. Do not touch me. I'm pregnant. No, it's ridiculous! What are you doing? What are you doing? Ma'am! Okay, so I'm pregnant! Please! I'm pregnant! Please! 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 Please!
Alameda to serve that first line, 2020 Monterey Avenue. Okay, get up, ma'am. I can't, I'm pregnant. Okay. Watch yourself. Uh, my stomach, stop. My stomach, stop. So why are you resisting? Because you guys are stupid. Y'all are stupid. Stop. Go ahead. Get yourself up, please. Please. Get yourself up, please. Please don't touch me. Please. Don't. Please. Please get yourself up. Please, I can't. Stop. Okay. Audrey. We'll get your stuff, okay? Officers treat you like an animal, like a monster. This is Michelle Cooks today. Cook says police charged her with resisting arrest, but a judge dismissed the charges. She gave birth to her daughter, Olive, two months after the arrest. She was healthy at birth. Her mother, though, remains traumatized. You just looked at me and said, oh, she must be this way, and I'm not that way. You make me feel that I'm a way that I'm not, and I work so hard to provide for my family. Kyung Law, CNN, Los Angeles. Now, in a statement, the city of Barstow says, quote, it is apparent that Ms. Cooks actively resisted arrest. The Barstow Police Department continues to be proactive in training its officers to assess and handle interactions with emotionally charged individuals. This incident was in no way racially motivated. Now, let's test all that because it is certainly a controversial well, situation. Say, Michelle pregnant. Cooks is very pregnant and says a police officer knew that and still treated her like an animal, forcing her to the ground and making an arrest for nothing. The city defends the police action. So let's start with the facts and then test this use of force. CNN's Kyung La sets the table for us. What are you doing? Ma'am, please. Oh my God, how did dropping off children at school suddenly escalate to this? Okay. Police body cam video captures the entire incident. What's going on, ma'am? The first contact the Barstow police officer has is with this blonde woman, who says she called the police to the school. No damage to the woman's car. The Barstow police officer then clearly says this. I don't see I don't right now, I don't, I, I don't see a crime that has been committed. If there was damages, I would give you the opportunity to right. place her under citizen's arrest if you wanted to. I don't see any crime. The officer walks over to the other woman, Michelle Cooks, who had just dropped off her second grade daughter at school. She's upset after the confrontation with the other woman. She was hugging and hugging. So I was like, Roma, Roma, see what she want. She was like, um, you cannot park right, I mean, you cannot drive right here. This is a one-lane thing. The officer then asks for Cook's name. Okay, what is your name, ma'am? I'm not giving you my name. Cooks gets on the phone to call her boyfriend. Ma'am, I'm going to give you two minutes. He gives her about 20 seconds. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Ma'am, please. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. I'm pregnant. Do not touch me. Cooks is eight months pregnant and never stops screaming. What are you doing? She Certainly a controversial a arrest, to say the least. So we bring in CNN law enforcement analyst and retired NYPD detective, Mr. Harry Houck, and CNN legal analyst Mel Robbins. Thank you to you both. All right, Harry, yes, uh, let's take it from the top. I didn't hear the officer on the tape, his body camera, right. uh, running. I didn't hear him ask the white lady for her identification. Did you? So let's no. start from there. And what do you think about this arrest? Okay, first of all, uh, I wouldn't have treated these people the same way that this officer did. If I were to respond to this, listen, you got a verbal altercation between two people. you got no crime committed here. Which he recognizes. Right, exactly. He says, I don't see a, exactly. I don't see a, a crime. So I would have said to both of them, listen, this is over. Go on your merry way. All right, All right? but apparently that didn't happen. So now he All walks right? up to the second woman. So now woman. he walks up to the second woman, asks her for her name. All right? Any individual, would, it, would you have given your name? I would have given my name. Maybe, Listen, maybe not. I don't have the right, I have the right to or not, but I would at least give him the name and see where I went from there. Okay? California, the as you know, under their state's criminal procedure, took the time to pass a law that right. says, I don't have to give you my identification. Unless by the, way. the officer believes a crime may have been committed. Which he obviously does right? not. Which he did not. He did. did the officer act improperly here? It's already been thrown out of court. My issue with this whole thing here is that you must, by law, and I know Mel will back me up on this, submit to a police officer when he places you under arrest. All right? You cannot resist arrest. All, right? all she had to do was put her hands behind her back all right, and get handcuffed, and she wouldn't have been involved in an altercation. 
you are putting it on her when he is the one who did the wrong thing. Yeah. He, had, he knew there was no crime. But it's still the he law. He goes up to a lady. She's obviously pregnant. Yeah, she's giving him a little toot. She's angry. Right. It's the, the law. You arrest that lady? Right. Listen, I would not have, okay? But what I'm saying still, whether the police officer is right or wrong, you must submit to that officer. And then after you're arrested, then you take it through the courts. Uh, my take is I completely agree with you, Chris. Good morning, Harry. And yes, I will back you up with this exception, though, Harry. The police cannot engage in behavior where they escalate a situation, arrest people without any grounds whatsoever, and then after the fact, when a citizen is fully within her rights to say, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Say, hey, you're the one that is the problem. I've got a couple issues with this, Chris, and this tape is not only disturbing to watch, but I think it's actually extremely educational. And Chris, you've already pointed out a bunch of the things that struck me. Here we know Michelle Cook's name. We don't even know the white lady's name. We still don't know her name. She wasn't asked for her name. She wasn't asked for her identification. And while I agree that this is not a situation of explicit racial bias, I do believe that this is one of these examples of what people keep talking about of implicit bias. The officer shows up. He talks to a woman who's upset. He admits that there's absolutely no crime. He then walks over to Michelle Cook, treats her completely differently. She's upset, but one of the things that happens is he asks for her name. She actually gives him her name. She says, my name's Michelle. And then she says, I want to call my boyfriend and see if I have to give you my ID. Within 20 seconds, he's grabbing her for absolutely no reason. He treats her completely differently. Right. Now, Harry, and I agree. People the, talk the, about the implicit arrest, bias. I agree. The arrest, it was a bad arrest. I agree 100%. No, no, I'm moving a step past it. Okay. And the point of disagreement will be, you say, once you decide to place me under arrest, right. I have to submit. Yes. Now, I often see the value in that proposition when there's situations where it's a man and another man and you, you know, there's some dispute about it and now you're going to take, put me under arrest and now my behavior toward you as the officer is going to determine the outcome of that situation. Exactly. Even if it were a traffic stop for a broken taillight, mm -hmm. once I give you tood, everything changes in that dynamic. I get it. But it's not a man. It's a very pregnant woman. Mm -hmm. And it's a situation where he has no reason for suspicion, except arguably the color of her skin. But the officer thought and he was acting in good faith. All right. Where? And Where's the good faith? No. Listen, I can't read his mind. What you just said. All right, Chris. He thought. I'm assuming that he thought. Well, you're assuming he right. thought. Right. I'm assuming that he so thought. you are actually that he his acted, mind, Yes, I guess I am. All right, I'm sorry. Okay. And right. what are you reading but, into? And what I'm seeing here is that the officer thought he was acting properly. Listen, the officer's got a cam on. All right, so he knows everything that he's doing is being recorded. So he believes what he's doing is right. Or now, whether, whether, whether or not well, they haven't interpreted that law, that law correctly in California on when you can show somebody ID and when you can't uh, show somebody ID. Now, that article by the ACLU yesterday that came out, all right, is a little bit um, misleading. Why? Because it basically says you don't have to show your ID to a police officer when he asks for it. You do. Yeah, but... You, know, you do under certain you do circumstances. Under certain but, circumstances. But, but those circumstances... We're not at play here. But the, no, those are, no, but the fact is you have to, you know, you have to, you should do that. You know, any level-headed person would show ID. I would have, and the reason why that woman wasn't spoke to Mel is because she was the complainant. All right? She's the one to call the police. Yeah, but you the know police what, Harry? Responded Harry, to, Harry, Mel, Harry, just one but second. But you know what, Harry? All right? Responded, no, no, responded no, to the police. Harry. Right? Well, hold on, and they responded to the he's making. Yeah, except even though she's the 911 complainant, when he showed up on that situation, he had just as much reason to question her as he did the other lady because he Correct. decided this was just a, you know, two people fighting and no, and no real crime. And he did question her. Mel, what about the aspect of the police department taking the officers back and saying they believe the arrest was justified? Do you think that's the right posture for them to have here? Well, I think that, you know, that's, that's the only posture that they're going to take because, of course, they knew that this was likely going to go to a lawsuit. But let's back up a minute. Let's look at the context. This isn't a suspected drug deal. This is an elementary school parking lot where both women are, are, have grounds to be there. And the police are there not only to get the facts, guys, but to de escalate the situation. I if agree. you're a trained police officer and you show up to an elementary school and there's no crime that's committed and you have two women that are a little upset because of some verbal issue that happened, the police shouldn't be the one escalating the situation. That's exactly what happened in this case and it was wrong, Chris. Mel Robbins, Harry Houck, thank you very much.